<laughs> All right, I'm I'm rolling. Uh, can you see the, the building site in my backyard? The, what's out there? The, yeah, can you see that that it's a, like a building site? Oh yeah, what are you building? Uh, like a shed or garage or home office or place that my wife kicks me out when she can't stand having me in the house anymore. <laughs> People are like, like offices that you can just like plug in in your backyard, just like a little uh, mm. device. Everybody's house has gotten smaller in the last year and a half, huh? Mm, that, that was what I initially planned to do. And then I got convinced to actually build a proper shed with like starting with a hole in the ground. So it's like, right. we're going down to go up. What? Okay. Another good way to get out of the house is, uh, is these long endurance rides, though, right? That's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's something we're doing lately. Uh, for for folks, just reset. Uh, Rona McLaughlin here, um, new Everesting, new and old Everesting world record holder. Um, the you, I, I'll say you, you've kind of broken Everesting. I, I'll almost say single handedly. I, I might have. I'll take some credit for getting the word out, but uh, but you're the one who you've brought it to several new levels at this point. You were the first. Well, you weren't sub six hours, but you took 25 minutes off Contador and everyone's like, oh, that's what the times could be. Uh, and now you've, you've done what up yourself. So your, your new time is, is what? Uh, six hours and 40 minutes and 54 seconds, I think. But you did, you did say the last time I was on the show that I had broken Everest and, and I had only broke it for two months before, uh, right. before, before it was unbroken. So. Yeah, but you, but you, I would say you changed the game. You know, you we, we're we're realizing what's possible and what the four minute mile is. Um, and at somewhere I read six thirty, and and it seems to be six thirty is 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 where the if if someone forced Quintana to to go through this, <laughs> um, that that might be what you could do. Uh, but there's there's a it's a very short list of of folks who would play with it, and and luckily like. They're all super busy, and then there's a matter of like will and the drama that you're going through. So let's. let's look at that. I guess uh, question one is what what did you do different to take to take 20 minutes off the new record or close to it, and and half an hour off your previous time? Uh, I suppose the big change was like last year I had I don't know four, six, maybe maximum eight weeks to to train for it, uh, whereas this year I, I've just sort of been. You know, my only goal, because competition and everything is so uncertain at the moment, my only goal throughout the winter was uh, training for everything. So I've had quite a, quite a long time to actually build and, and prepare specifically for it, at least uh, four or five months of, of good, solid training. And then, yeah, I made some uh, tweaks to my bike, as I think everybody was expecting I would. I had, and, and I had eight months to specifically train for it, and it made me slower. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like I to all summer and then I just fizzled myself out and uh, I made it 20,000 feet anyway go ahead I just I'm just trying to give you credit where it's due <laughs> I was actually so nervous yeah watching your updates because I, I was really excited to see when the videos were coming out but I was like oh my god it's so difficult to go back and do it again am, am I going to be able to do it again and yeah that was always playing on my mind and um you know thankfully we got the chance nearly two weeks ago well a week and a half ago now to 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 give it a go but i think had it dragged on and dragged on where you know i was waiting on the right conditions and waiting on the form and waiting on taper and all that right. yeah it gets very difficult to manage all those things and, and get everything right on the day like yeah and, and just like people don't i i've i've seen some like twitter debates whatever but i don't i think people don't realize like how much logistics go into it like how many you have to schedule like your life and it's a full day and you need, you know, you had a couple of buddies out there feeding. Uh, so you got to coordinate them. And I assume like most people have things to do that isn't standing on a hill uh, for a day. <laughs> like mine, mine needed, cause we had traffic control was my fear. We couldn't close the road. So I really needed like seven or eight people there. It's just like a lot of text messages to be like, today's the day. <laughs> uh, a lot of calling in, calling in friends. So like that, yeah, that's, that's a tough, that's a tough couple of weeks. That, that was actually one of the hardest things and that's you know all, all the people who wanted to be there to help me and all the you know and, and i want them there as well because they're great support in that first of all uh because of covid we could only have like a tiny crew there and then secondly because it was like inevitably going to fall on a weekday i had this mental conundrum of you know do you text people literally 24 hours beforehand and say can you help me tomorrow and then they feel pressured to take a day off work and 
you know, right. I feel pressure at the same time that I have to say to people because you don't want them to miss out. And it's just, yeah, there's there's no, it's so difficult. I was so lucky the first time I did everything that had happened the following on Sunday and everybody could be there. Uh, but the the previous the next two attempts were yeah it's it's difficult to to know what to do you, you don't want people to miss out but then you don't want to put them under pressure to take a day off work yeah of course of course no you're you're a nice guy that way um so so what else did you do so sorry we were going on uh, I interrupted the bike uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah I, like I used the exact same segment again I think it's pretty much perfect I, I i did find another client pretty close by that i did a half everything on recently but it's not quite as good um so yeah i used the exact same segment on the more gap uh, and just uh again sort of a few things that you know although i i threw caution to the wind for the last record last year i think this year i really threw caution to the wind and that i just struck everything back on the bike went as light as we could uh, and then I use a full on time trial skin suit and a more modern aero helmet, uh, just was in better condition. I was lighter myself. The bike was, uh, the, the guts of a uh, kilo lighter. So I originally thought my bike last year was 6.2 kilos. When we got it accurately measured, it was actually 6.4 and this bike was 5.5. So, um, yeah. And, and then instead of having to hacksaw my bikes. I or my handlebars. I I got actual base bar time trial handlebars that were pre-shaped uh, like that. So I didn't I didn't have to do any. Well, I, the hacksaw still came out. The hacksaw was used for the fairing on the front. Uh, so okay. it, it, it still got used. I think it's important that that some amount of duct tape, rubber bands, and hacksaws. <laughs> every every weird geek bike. Um, yeah, it didn't. It didn't seem right using duct tape as a, as a tech writer for you know a global website that I was duct taping things onto my bike. But you know, needs must. There's no compromises. Yeah, do what you gotta do, and it, it just makes it more interesting. The uh, so yeah, so talk about cycling tips. That's that's a little bit new as far as I think that happened after I talked to you before. Yeah, did you yeah, actually completely coincidentally when I did the Everesting last July thirtieth? Cycling tips advertised on the on the same day, I believe, or roughly the same day for this tech writer position, and uh, yeah, I just seen it and thought that looks pretty cool, and heard about it on their podcast and applied. And long story short, here I am now. And I got was successful in the right. interview process. And, well, they they yeah. looked at your everything, but they're like, yeah, this guy knows what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this guy's mad. Uh, yeah, perfect. Um, cool. so that was another thing I, I liked. That, uh, you had some great content. You had a really nice video. Uh, I was just watching that Cycling Tips made uh, made for this. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so that, that was kind of a really nice opportunity as well to be able to, to document this this uh, everything. And, you know, you see my family in it and it's just something nice for us to watch now. But then for my daughter, hopefully in a few years time, she'll be able to watch that and, and have something yeah, I, I don't know. We, you make videos all the time, so uh, maybe maybe we watch them back. Maybe we don't. But I have this idea that we can watch it back in the future, and it, uh, it, it it's nice just to share the story as well and uh, show off, you know, our our area here, how beautiful it is and scenic, and and yeah, it's uh, it was pretty cool to. What was that? It was a little dreary, but okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it got a whole lot worse than that afterwards. Yeah, I believe that. Um, but that that video came out nice. I I didn't get to watch the whole thing. I got to the, I I was I was skimming through right before we talked because you just sent me the link a few minutes ago. But uh, the only one is your your dad's desk looks like my brain. <laughs> that, was, that was my that was my main take. It's just like man, that guy that guy needs to clean his desk. That was um, a good angle. You yeah. want to see what was behind the camera? <laughs> Whoever shot that was like, oh yeah, let me let's put him right here. <laughs> um the uh the other one can i want to talk a little about your effort the i, I don't want to like spoil what was in the cycling tips video but you had a flat tire i did yeah uh i think it was 10 laps to go uh, just as i made the turn to the top was accelerating getting down into the super tuck uh and just bang yeah didn't and you know that split second initially didn't know what it was and then the bike was the back wheel was alongside me and that sort of told me yeah there's a problem with the back wheel <laughs> so uh yeah I, I thought i was going down i genuinely thought i was going down and sort of considered aiming for the grass you know that you split both? second uh i thought you know when i was thinking about it on the right i thought it was like 60k an hour but when i look at the training peaks file i think it was like 40 or something but it was still faster than uh, i i was 
I'm sort of counting myself lucky that it didn't happen further down the descent where I would be at like 80 k an hour. So yeah, uh, that that would have been worse. There's a weird thing with Everest thing where like I, you know, I since we you and I talk about it, and then there's people doing it everywhere that aren't on camera, and and I'm like, you know, I don't I don't want I don't like I don't want to set the example of super tucking and going past people's driveways and that kind of thing. Like your hill is super remote and safe. Um, you know, so those folks doing it at night, there's, I talk, maybe talk a little about the safety aspect uh, of that. Yeah, so one of the, actually, you've probably seen the skin suit I was wearing and the reason it was yellow and red was just because I wanted to be more visible. Uh, I'd got that specific suit made for an ultra endurance race I was doing. So it wasn't, um, and, uh, from it, was, sir? it wasn't blood and urine from the effort. That <laughs> <laughs> there, there probably was those, uh, substances in there but no that, that was the color it started but uh you know it was actually probably unnecessary because i think it was about five or six cars passed on the whole day um so uh, yeah it's it's a really quiet rural uh road that doesn't get much traffic other than uh i think i think around rush hour you get people traveling from from one side of the hill to the other there's a big town in the other so uh, but rush hour could be maybe 10 cars in one hour rather than 10 yeah. cars in the whole day. Rush hour I experienced in LA. Um, cool. Awesome. I, my, what are your thoughts? I mean, you talk a lot about the bike and I think people ask you about the bike cause you go crazy with it. Um, does that, I'm, I'm, does that bother you? Cause I'm bothered on your behalf that people focus on the bike. I'm like, he still did like 350 Watts or whatever for the whole day. Like you could put a million people on your bike and they're not going to go that fast. Uh, and you could put you on anybody's bike and it's going to be ridiculously impressive. Um, um, I don't think it really bothers me. You know, I, I'm fully aware when you're making all these adjustments that there is going to be haters out there that, that <laughs> you know, don't, don't, don't like that. But you know, ultimately I wanted to see how fast I could do this thing. And, you know, if, if you're looking for you know to get yourself as fit as possible and you're looking to optimize the bike as much as possible well you know where where does it stop with a bike you know if if you can put on a set of wheels that's 300 grams lighter then you know why wouldn't you and if you can improve the aerodynamics of the bike you know again there, there's no there's no there's no rules here that says somebody else can't go and do the exact same thing so yeah to me it, it doesn't it doesn't really bother me I, i'm proud of the effort that i did and it's actually one of the first things I've done on the bike that I've immediately went well actually I'm incredibly happy with how that went I don't feel <laughs> you know I, I, I've done loads of things in the past and there's always been like an, an, enough for a butter of maybe but you know somebody wasn't there or if this had happened or if that didn't happen or whatever but this was just yeah I worked hard for it and it, it paid off well part of it too I've, I've kind of made this point like you're you're obviously you're right anyone can can geek out their bike any way they want um but also like you've innovated there, you know, like you've earned that. That's, that's part of the work is, is thinking about that testing things. Like you did a half Everest as a test. That's ludicrous. Uh, <laughs> just like a lot of different elements of it that like, to me, the, what you've done to the bike is, is also respectable as much as training and preparation for anything else. It's just like part of the legwork uh, of all of it. Uh, and that probably comes from you know watching the likes of Graham Mowbray and that and you know they he was a a pioneer in, in terms of the hour record and the track and all the all the things that he managed to achieve working out of his kitchen um, and as you can see in the background here we're getting the shed built so I, I'm working out of the kitchen at the moment and I was sort of thinking about that all especially last year when it was very much a backyard attempt you know it was a what what can I do with what I've got at hand? And I, I quite enjoyed that sort of aspect of the, the challenge as well. And to me, that's that's all part of the the challenge of everything. Yes, there's the the physical challenge of riding up and down a single hill enough times to get eight thousand eight hundred forty eight meters. But there's also, you know, obviously the mental challenge of it. But there's a challenge of actually just getting there as well, getting all the training done, regardless of whether you want to do this in record time or or you know, twice that time or whatever it is, you have to train for this attempt and, yeah. you know, then waiting for the right conditions and getting your team together and getting your nutrition together. All, all that is a challenge that, you know, you look at any record attempt and you sort of look at the actual physical output, but there's so much more to it. Um, and I, I'm, as I said earlier, I'm just glad we got it done a week and a half ago because 
I think I was maxed out on what what I could do, <laughs> what I could sustain. Even like the the half Everest thing as a test. Yes, it was a test, but it was also easier. As ludicrous as this going to sound, is it was easier to go and do a half Everest thing, which was sort of a challenge, than to get another day of training done. Uh, I was like, I can't go for another day of training. I'm just gonna, you know, take two days off, and if I do a half Everest thing, then that'll be enough training for this week. So that made it a bit, <laughs> a bit easier. How hard were you doing for for training? Give me an idea. How hard was I for the half? Yeah, what kind of volume were you doing just in training the last? Oh, week? right, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I was, I think I was doing about on average probably twelve or thirteen hours per week. And um, over over the holidays and that, I got bigger blocks done. Um, but yeah, I think I was focusing a lot more on quality rather than than quantity. And uh, you know, we talked last year a bit about my training, and most of it this year because it was through the winter was indoors and it. I always find that if I if I'm forced to do a big block of indoor training, I come off it going really really well. And yeah, it seems exactly. to have worked again. Yeah, it's the the training. It's for for it being miserable. It's concentrated. You don't. There's no coasting. Uh, mm -hmm. Real specific in your workouts. And then if you do four hours on the trainer, it's worth eight hours outdoors, isn't it? So it almost is. Yeah. <laughs> Mentally, it's it's uh, it's very different. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so does the so in the in the like looking back and you know and and could haves would haves flat tire doesn't bother you you lost some time it, it definitely does if 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 it had been like the difference between a 638 and a 639 then it wouldn't have bothered me but the fact that it's the difference between a 6 or 39 and a 6 or 40 that yeah <laughs> really bothers me okay that's the, <laughs> um but but i'm i'm not going to try and I, I can I can tell myself now uh, we can have later that I personally did a six or thirty something effort. I just got you know a flat tire that meant that the time is reading something different. And please don't try and change my mind. <laughs> no, here's the thing: is like it will, it, your mind will be changed by who you are when uh, when enough time has passed that you want to do it again. Uh, it have any nothing to do with anybody else or anyone else going. The thing is that. I, for last year, this time last year, I, I was I was making a new video every time someone broke the Everesting record, which was like twice a week for a minute. Um, <laughs> and if you, I'm sure people have noticed that's become less frequent as the record has gotten more absurd. Uh, so I think Sean's held for how many months? What did he get? Like August, like almost six months. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm I'm doing bad math there, but uh, his his record held for far longer than mine. I think you're you're putting 20 minutes on it. We'll set it away from. From anyone. When I when I rode with Chris Froome, I was when I was Everesting training last fall, and I rode with Froome one day. I was just sort of asking him if he wanted to do it, and uh, and absolutely not was his answer ever. When he's retiring, like I, I don't see this being a lot of like time trialists go and like oh I'll set the hour record in my retirement. I don't see Everesting being that version for for climbers. I just don't think it just, it's a matter of there's ability that exists, and then there's will that uh that just no one wants to go through that. I have a sort of an alternative theory and that, you know, when I first looked at it, I thought it was going to take me 10 hours and that was the biggest obstacle. It was like, I don't want to ride my bike for 10 hours. Um, and then obviously I did it in eight and then I did it in seven and now it's nearly six and a half. If someone brings it under six and a half, then I reckon more tour pros are going to look at it and go, that's just a six hour spin. I do six hour spins all the time. Yeah, it's a hard endurance ride. That is interesting. Yeah. You've made it, you've made it more attainable. Uh, I think so in a strange way i i it would be fun to see them all try and 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 fail for for whatever reasons um i don't think we'll hear about it if they don't break it unfortunately that's yeah that's a fair point <laughs> every time every time i fail and it's been a lot now i'm like do i even want to put this up yeah fine i'll put it up um just let people feel bad for me um so what's so what's next you've uh you've you've caught your white whale um any, you know, little rest maybe or, or other goals, double Everesting, 24 hour record? Every Everesting I've started, I've said, you know what? I'm going to do the 10,000 today. And I've never done 10,000. <laughs> and I never, never will do 10,000. Yeah. How much, even, yeah, even, not that much even halfway, no, even halfway through last week, I was like, yeah, I could do the 10,000 today. No chance. Yeah, not so. one additional pedal stroke. Please. And also, <laughs> you want to, you want to, you want to nail the effort to the finish line that makes the most sense. You know, if you saved gas for an extra thousand meters, that for sure you'd regret later. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, you finished, and that's a that's a job well done. Mm -hmm. 
Cool. Uh, yeah, I have a few goals in mind, but I, yeah, I think the, you know, as, as I said, the Everson thing was all about how fast can I do it? And that, that's what cycling has always been about for me. You know, I, even when I was racing in Europe and all, it was just, it wasn't so much about results and that was probably part of my problem. <laughs> But yeah, you know, it was, it was all, just as I said that I made that realization there. Um, it was it was all about how good can I make myself, and that was sort of a blessing as well. Is and that although I was never sort of in a you know situation where doping was an option, or uh, it, for me personally, even it never would have been an option, or never something I would ever even consider because I just wanted to see how good can I make myself, and I think. With everything I've done with everything, I am I'm happy to say this is the best that I can. And you know, if that's if I went through everything we went through for the last six months and trained really well for it and did everything to the bike and you know did seven hours in one minute, which wouldn't have been a record, I I, I think I still would have been happy with that because I wanted to see what I, I left last year knowing that I could do better, and I think yeah. I've done as best I can. That's that's a beautiful thing. I. I want to hear a little bit more about the between racing and and Everesting because it's I've I've had a, I've had the same feeling with with Everesting with Strava with anything else like you go in a race and a you're on a team you have a job you have a role there's like politics involved um, and then there's there's tactics and there's just there's so many things that can go wrong and so few chances like I can think of the number of times that like I had a clean shot at something I can count on one hand in in like a nine year professional career. Um, mm -hmm. whereas like, here's this thing that it's, it's all you, your, your failure is yours, except you've only broken the record every time you've done it. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the success is yours, but it's all, it's, it's all, it's, it's like nor pure in a way it, it being more individual, but it's also like, there's nothing to hide behind. Yeah. And you know, that, that's part of, I, I've likened it a few times to track racing and that you can almost know before you start what you're going to do and uh, whereas with road racing and that, bizarrely that's one of the things i like most about road racing is that it is so tactical and i love that aspect of it and mm -hmm. you know it's you could be the, the weakest rider in a bunch but if you can position yourself with very little effort you'll go a lot better than riders who are twice as strong and mm -hmm. you know and, Casper Askreen last week, for example, I, I I just had to write a story about his performance in E3 because it was just such a tactical masterclass, and that I really like that about about road racing. But thankfully, for stuff that I'm actually doing myself, uh, I, I like the predictability of of everything and, and knowing sort of what you what you can do before you before you even start. Right. No, that's it, I think the track racing is a really good analogy because it's you have to know your pacing before you go, but you know your pacing, so you already know your result. <laughs> so it's just like like can i achieve my my ambitious pacing is the question but like <laughs> doing on it doing pursuits and it's like you choose your gearing before you start and that's going to govern how you do it's like well i'm i remember like my first pursuit i was 22 and i was like i think a 450 seems pretty good and then i did exactly 450 with the gears i put on and you never know uh what, what else you're capable of so it's like setting that did you did you go in saying 640 uh, I, it was one of those, uh, I'm going to contradict myself now. And, you know, it, it was just like the last time I, I had worked out that I could beat, uh, Contador's time, but you don't really want to believe that because it just seems ludicrous. So I had, I, I had intentionally put in a message to a colleague that I was aiming for six hours, 30 something. Um, but on the day we started with the plan of six hours, 50. Um, just because, yeah, it's hard to believe. And then 10 laps in, I was still, you know, I was, I was literally felt like I was flying. I was like, yeah, we're going to break six hours 50 here. Um, wow. just, just because of you know, how good I was feeling. So then it was kind of a case of, um, yeah, just, just going off feeling for, for the rest of it. And, and your pacing, I will do your pacing, not, not ideal, but not the thing is you're in the range where you're not falling apart, which so kind mm -hmm. of that doesn't matter. I don't think that. Yeah, bad. and I think uh, I, I probably did overcook it in the first in the first half of it. Um, not to the extreme that I was going to blow up, but I think I did the first the, uh, to base camp in three hours and ten or three hours and fifteen minutes or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it was three hours and twenty or three hours and twenty five for the second half. Mm -hmm. um, but as I, as I said in the cycling tips uh, documentary. The weird thing about one more gap is that it's so steep, it's very, very difficult to 
decrease your pace unless you've got fatigue and forcing you to decrease your pace. It's like I, I was using the exact exact same gear at the start. I just you know couldn't actually slow down because it, it, it's so steep. You just you That's naturally cool. power over. It. It's hard to go. It's hard to go less than three hundred forty watts in certain environments when it's when you're climbing a wall. Um, yeah, yeah. But then then later on you somehow find a way because you don't have a choice. <laughs> right. Yeah, at some point, it's yeah. The, the cadence is the cadence. Mm -hmm. um, cool. What did I what did I miss? This is a uh, this is this is always fun to talk to you. I don't want it to end. <laughs> I think I think what you're saying is I, I shouldn't uh, shouldn't go to track racing because first of all, uh, pacing pacing is really important, <laughs> and then secondly, you have to choose your gear beforehand. So you'll always think, I wonder if I chose a different gear, would I go a bit faster? <laughs> I remember thinking just like just give me what Ashton Lambie has and see how long I can hold it. Uh, yeah. And that kind of worked, you know, I didn't go as fast as he did, but it's, it's close. And otherwise, otherwise you're like limiting your potential from the beginning. If you know a certain level or you have a certain goal, like you might as well try it and, and, and die, I guess, is mm -hmm. that, that might be one approach. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's not the best. Yeah. Well, unfortunately we don't have a Veldrome in Ireland, but uh, quite like the idea of trying it something. Well, I'm, looking at, I'm looking at, I'm looking at space. You could, you could build like at least a, a 50 meter. <laughs> well i i did a backyard hour record last year and okay. but it was the final hour of a three hour spin within my back garden and right. so it was 400 meters per lap and i think i did 50 kilometers or something so <laughs> not not 50 kilometers in one hour because if i did that i would be going for the hour record uh, right but 50 kilometers in three hours i did the math yeah. okay. <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> um Cool. I think folks, folks should definitely go check out the cycling tips piece. Um, get to know Ronan uh, better and and see like the they they did a really nice job with with getting good footage. The thing is too that I guess that's the last one is like that also is a lot of work. Uh, like creating content around stuff. Like if a lot easier to get a KOM if you're not coordinating a GoPro and cameras and all that stuff in, in my experience. But like doing it in a vacuum is not doesn't work. Like you have to share it. Uh, yeah, yeah. So they, they, I thought they, they nailed that, and hopefully it didn't. That didn't cost you too much time in uh, having to put it in. No, definitely it didn't. On on the day, it didn't cost me a second. Um, if if anything, it probably helped me because I knew the cameras were on, so I had to keep the keep the keep the uh, the performance up. Maybe there is more pressure in that environment. Yeah, I, I, I didn't feel it if there was, but possibly I suppose. Awesome. Well, congrats again. Uh, I think that's going to stand for for quite a while. I'm not even thinking about it for for the short term and possibly not for the ever. Um, but uh, I, I think I'm, you have to. I think you have to come to Ireland when restrictions are lifted and and give them a more gap. I go. I, I would love to. The, the The hill in Virginia still looks kind of good to me, um, but it might. You know, now it's like an hour and a half faster than my time. So at some point, it's just out of my. I just need to make my body feel good. Is like my first priority. <laughs> I, I overcooked it trying to do 26 hour weeks and you're over here doing every single records in 12. Um, mm. I, I think I have, I have too much of the pros in my brain. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, big weeks, you know, 32 hours. Um, that's not necessary for, uh, for, for going nuts for a one day. It does seem like that. I, I certainly paid for that. I, I, I don't know, but I, I do know from past experience that, you know, if I get much above, uh 120 ctl or something like that i'm gonna blow so uh, i have to keep it fairly low interesting yeah all my all my best results were just after like i had i go you know i win something i'd go look at the last few months and be like 25 hours 28 hours 31 hours all right that's what i gotta keep doing <laughs> <laughs> um and it's so uh, take a break but um yeah we'll we'll do a we'll do a coaching consultation in the future <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, I just told my coach, like we just go with what I, what worked for me before, um, but I, I might I might deep dork on your Strava and see what else you were up to. Um, that's the other thing too is like all this is available. People want to see what to do with your bike, they can look at. If you want to see what you did for training, like have at it. Uh, mm -hmm. More gap is is open to the public. Um, yeah, exactly. And um, I've I've never had anything about it. Um, so anybody that wants to know more drop me a line or whatever and i can share whatever yeah, like recycling tips now <laughs> <laughs> so i have to actually share everything about it <laughs> yeah they got they got a two for one with uh with your hire um definitely awesome 
Uh, thanks a lot, man. Appreciate it. I'm sure that the audience does too. But uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll hear from you again in three weeks when you break the record without a flat. Uh, we'll that. <laughs> I, I, I doubt it. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, man. Appreciate it. See ya. Thank you.